OKD Working Group Documentation Subgroup Meeting for June 14th of 2022. And if you do not have a link to the agenda, uh, I can drop it uh, in the channel. Uh, please put your name uh, to let us know that you were here. Uh, and uh, take a moment to look over the agenda and um, see if there's anything that's been missed. Basically, it's a lot of copy and paste from uh, the last meeting, um, just because folks have been so busy. <clears throat> and uh, let's throw over to you, Brian, for tech technical documentation stuff, and then I have a question for you that I added uh, uh, to, to that item. Okay, so <clears throat> I've been looking at where we want to go with the technical documentation. Um, obviously, the conversation at the last general group, when we potentially going to add a second OS, um, I've been looking at what implication that has. Um, I've also been looking at, um, which goes to our, 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 our pre-meeting chat, is to how easy it is to join the community. And I listened to um, a, a talk. Now, I'm, I'm not sure whether it was an internal company talk or an external one. I need to go find it. But they were talking about what makes a good open source community. And one of the factors of the really successful ones is the ease of boarding, ease of getting into the community. If you have to struggle, um, then you get the diehards that, that really want to be there will join, but you're not going to get people with a general interest to come and start participating and become an active member. And and I think I think we need to look at that because as I say, we, we can't build easily. Um so I am looking at what are the options. So I, I've actually just put a pause on what I was going to do and I'm just trying to think more strategically, where do we want to get to with the documentation? And I, I think we do want to get to a point where somebody can build and even maybe to the point where we have the scripts or the GitOps set up that they can just import with a very easy way of, this is how you can get started. This is how you can do a build with almost zero learning curve. So I think that's where we want to get to the challenge is how do we get there um, in, in a way that would work for both Fedora and CentOS streams. So, so, so th that's what I've been looking at. So I've been looking at um, things just like, is there an easy way to do that replace strategy where we've got the internal images? Um, there are a couple of technologies that we could use, whether it's a um, whether it's a hook, mutating hook, or whether it is using the the cryo, going and figuring the cryo mirror um, with the tag thing. I think we have to put a, a machine set config or something in there. The um, the configuration only does the the hashes at the mirror at the minute, so um, until version four twelve. So I've been looking at things like that. Um, can we actually get a generic pipeline, Tekton pipeline going? Um, I've also been looking at how do we get the base tools within OKD so we can use a community GitOps operator. I put a link in the chat. Um, if you go to the Tekton project, they have an installing on OpenShift page, and it's a one-line command. So it's not the operator and setting it up that way, but there's a one line command on the tecton dot whatever it is, tecton dot dev site, which puts tecton and it adds the menu item in. And yet we don't get all of the um, operator, all of the, the tasks and pipelines, but could we then build something in our, in our repo when we have the repo that says import this and you get an, a, a build pipeline and just plug in the name of the component you want to build or something like that. So I've, I've been doing a lot of exploring around, um, hopefully with the idea of coming up with a proposal of saying, this is what we want as a, a sort of no hassle getting started of building your own. 
um, rather than just having to go, this is how you find the repo. And by digging around, I'm sure you'll find a way in which you can build it. Because I don't think that's an easy getting started. And ideally, we do want to maybe push something in. Um, and I know Mike mentioned it, that maybe we can actually try and get a standardized approach across the repos, because I've also been looking at what are the images. And I was shocked at how many base images, how many different base images. Now, I know the Prow system does a replace, so they actually don't build from those. But if you look at the state of the repos, there's a huge number of of base images where they just haven't been updated because they're not used for active builds. So none of the maintainers have been looking. So I think there's there's a set of actions like that where we can go and maybe do um, raise issues or do pull requests onto the Red Hat repos and suggest that they change the base image and come up with a standard of doing that. So maybe get some, getting some of the Red Hatters to push that internally within the community as well. So that, that's what I've been looking at. So I've sort of stopped adding new content and I've really just taken a step back. The idea is to come up with a proposal that we can get everyone to agree on. This is what we want the getting started experience to be for a developer, not for a user, but for somebody who wants to contribute, maybe customize, maybe do a, their own build. So one thing I want to ask is how do we how do we get people beforehand to participate in the group? How can we, as the documentation subgroup, get people interested in writing some of these docs, in contributing towards writing some of the pipelines that will, you know, swap out images and build and and whatnot? Because that's to me, there's the three of us, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, and and Michael when he has time, right? And, and to me, if we have a concrete plan and we have a concrete ask, I think people are, are more willing to join and participate if it's not a a, a navel gazing exercise where yeah, they just haven't that got that a clue before. what they're. Yeah. So I, again, that's yeah. why I want to come up with a proposal, turn that into a set of actions, and then we can ask people to volunteer for the actions. Right. Yeah, I think, I I think the name the of the working group is a doom if you're trying to yeah. attract uh, technical people. Because remember, it started, out, it started out as the for about one meeting uh, as the operators working group. Um, and then I, we, I mean, we I, changed, I, it, changed the focus. And um, some of us are too dumb to leave, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, the uh, really, it's not just the documentation because we we do you know like the the stuff that uh, Brian is now getting into uh, is more digging into technical things. I mean, I, I see it. I see us as more the community liaison or, or the community enablement group yep. mm -hmm. rather than documentation is part of community enablement. Right. So I, I see us as the community enablement group. So. So you, the other. The piece of that, and I think you guys are hitting on something good, is like if you look at um, Kubernetes, they have the contributor SIG, which is all about onboarding people and you know creating ladders for contributions and, and that stuff. So I think we're on to something here too. The, the other thing is once you, if you do do the proposal that you're doing, and if we had a template for what people, what we wanted to ask of people, like if we had a template that we could give to CERN and say here, tell us about your build process, put it into this templated form and structure. We could do that just once um, and have one good example. We've done in the past these, these hackathons. Um, there are other community building tools like incentivizing people to, to, to share their stuff. You know, we've got swag and backpacks and badging. Fedora has badges and stuff like that. There's, there's stuff we can do that helps people get recognition. The, the other thing is um, to, f to figure out how to get um, main, other maintainers, ex external maintainers on maybe we call it documentation, but on these um, GitOps patterns or the build patterns and, and different things um, so that they're actually getting to be a contributor and getting to be a maintainer in this, you know, at, at, you know we could, 
I don't know what you want to call the group or how you want to structure it, but once we perhaps see the proposal and we had a template, because I know Jamie, you're, you know, and everybody's the hot stuff is GitOps and GitOps patterns and things like that. If we, you know, we could do some interesting things around that um, for deploying OKD and building OKD. Um, and I, I think you, we could host a hackathon. We did that a while ago and that got, that get, garnered me um, without templating, um, without a pattern that we wanted people to fit into for our documentation needs, um, a, a whole lot of really good insights into deploying and testing on different platforms. And we haven't done anything like that in, in a long time. And uh, that, you know, so maybe the outcome of this and then to do get some marketing behind it, you know, to get some real marketing appeal, uh, you know, especially if we called it GitOps or I don't know, pick pick a good name. Um, yeah. I think you're. Yeah, and, and, oh, go ahead, Brian. Sorry, sorry, Jeremy. I mean, the other thing that I want to do is, I mean, I'm doing the next two gatherings. I want to use them as a an outreach and a almost a recruiting. Mm -hmm. So if, if we can tell a story at the gathering of what we're doing in the short term and if this is something you you think is useful and want to help, I'm give playing. them a landing plate, okd.io, yeah. to slash contribute or whatever. And, and, and I think we, we want to use every opportunity to sort of reach yeah. out and say, we are an open, welcoming community. Um, if this is something that, that you feel is, is useful or valuable, come join, come help. So here's my impression. Let me, let me know if you folks think this is right. The people who are really deep and have the access to resources to spin up in AWS, et cetera, are the ones who are the most busy. The ones who would have the time and who are sort of the passionate folks starting out in this don't have the resources generally to, you know, they're trying to do SNO or something like that. Would it be beneficial for us to find the resources, to get someone to volunteer the resources for there to be an OKD cluster that folks can access who want to participate, participate, play around in, or whatever. I mean, that gets into the whole issues of, okay, you'd have to administer it and whatever, but so many people seem to be stuck on being able to to run it a single node or whatever because they don't have the resources, but they're interested in OKD. Yeah. Right? I, I think that is a an absolute minefield because first thing you're going to get the cryptocurrency miners thinking free resource. And, <laughs> um, but, but also, I think, I mean, why I got involved in OKD is because I had clusters at work that I had user permission at, but I wanted to get under the covers. And when you're in a joint cluster, which which, which comes to the point, if we if we have a joint OKD cluster, you can't do those things. You have to be a restricted user. And the benefit for me of OKD is without having to either break the OpenShift license agreement and, and running a hooky version of OpenShift, I have a legal runtime environment, which is very similar to OpenShift or the same as OpenShift, a few minor changes, but I have complete control. I can trash it. I can tr I can do the what ifs. I can so, really get under the cover. So given that then, and, and oh, actually, Bruce, you had something. You want to go ahead? Uh, well, no, I, one of the thoughts that came to me is that uh, in, in terms of sort of a hackathon, uh, with a catchy name is uh, the phrase closing the gaps. Mm. Okay, because like we do have these gaps between OCP and OKD, uh, which everybody is totally aware of. And, and with all of the, uh, you know, sort of the red hat, uh, you know, watch what's cool this time, you know, with, uh, you know, Edison and company, uh, they're always using uh, OCP. And uh, th that's probably like those videos would be a, a common place where people are going to have heard of us, and then they might come looking for okay, how can they do that? Yeah, and, so, and they want to get beyond the mini cube demos. Right. So to circle and, around this though, like 
do we need to really beef up the SNO documentation and tutorials? We need something. If we if we're saying okay, cluster well, is a bad idea, public cluster is a bad idea, or managed cluster providing that is a bad idea. We need to make the entrance to running OKD in general very follow these five steps to get an SNO up or run this bash script or whatever like yeah i mean i, I i'm hoping the 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 effort on code ready containers i mean we, we talked about that what about a month ago where yeah. and i think there was something on red hat tv where there was a refocus on code ready containers i'm hoping that does produce a a viable laptop experience which still has the ui maybe not all the security features but it still has the ui and the dev experience but it will run on a 16 gig laptop so do we well, then, it, it, it uh, takes so about uh, nine dig, nine gigs to run sure uh, and now one of the things that so we talked you're not going to be able to run a big ide as well sure but, but, but one of the but, things but, we talked about focus. is Okay, but one of the things that we talked about as a group recently was we can't support CARC, right? Because we don't have enough people to, we've been talking about, oh yeah, we're going to do a doc or we're going to do whatever, and we haven't really been able to. Do we hop on that thread that's in the discussion between the CRC folks? I don't know if you saw that. It's like, um, who is on that? I, there's a thread that's like multiple people some of them involved with CRC and some of them OKD, talking about this, this the gap that's there. Do we hop on there and push on the CRC folks to get an OKD version out of them directly, right? Because they were talking about there's some tricks that they could do and whatever. It, it seems to me that then if we can't do it ourselves, then we need to put the pressure on to get uh, a version put out with the OCP, you know, at the same time the OCP. I mean, the interesting thing is, if we do go CentOS screen, I mean, Christian seemed to say that when we go CentOS screen, we are effectively doing the same as OCP does in Prow for yeah, OKD. Right. So yeah. the question then comes, if we go that way for CRC, does that mean that we get a free CRC out of Prow? That's a good question. That's a good question, yeah. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that one. That's a good one. And Christian's in chat, but I can't. He's in a meeting right now, so I can't. Well, I'm 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 looking forward to Dublin next week because I'm hoping that I can have a really good chat with Christian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, sorry that it was so packed last week. That there's a lot of stuff yeah. we didn't get to because it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, the following week we'll have a deeper dive. Timothy will be back, and we can ask more questions. But I don't think you can ask the CRC question out of Timothy. But um, yeah. Ho hopefully. Um, a few others will, Fabiano and um, a few folks from the team that are working on this um, sprint, yeah. OKD on SCOS, will be there as well. Yeah, I mean, I, sorry, Jamie, I just want to go back to your previous question. I mean, I think something like the Red Hat Sandbox or the OpenShift Sandbox for OKD would help those that want it as a user experience rather than an admin or a or a, a contributor experience. So I think there would be merit in trying to replicate, say, like the OpenShift sandbox environment <coughs> for a user community that wanted dev. But then you ask the question, well, if it's the same dev experience, what are we getting? Yeah, or, that's what I, that's the pushback that yeah. I get is that, yeah. well, if that's, if that's the case, just go use the sandbox because the yeah. sandbox is there and that's the experience. I think what you said earlier, Brian, um, about wanting to be able to get under the hood and crash yeah. things and break things and stuff like that, yeah. that that's different than a sandbox or um, a developer yes. trying to yeah. a, a deploy an application. That's how do I break things, rebuild them, get to be a good sysadmin um, for this, yeah. this platform and, and understand you know, how things break and rebuild themselves and, and all that kind of goodness. Yeah. And, and that's the experience that we want to get. And you can't get that from any of the try before you buy stuff for OCP. No. Um, no. Really, no. Mm, and CRC. Oh, you know, I'd say yes, but it's it's not real. 
I don't know. It doesn't feel like to me like a real, I, I use the word sysadmin, so just shoot me if I'm using the wrong thing. But it doesn't feel like that um, that experience for me. And um, the thing that, that would make me really thrilled is if like on AWS, there was um, all the images and everything you need to deploy um, OKD with either FCOS or everything was there and you could just go to a menu and say, okay, I want to deploy this on and here's my credit card or here's my university's um, account and I'm going to spin it up um, and then you get to play. But, and that would be something that we don't really do for our product. Um, it might be something, you know, that we, it, it would we'll, be interesting. Okay. Well, that, that would be something actually, Diane, where, um a stripped down, down version would help a lot because uh, with the full version, it's quite chatty uh, and it's doing all of these monitoring things. And, uh, you know, so you're, you're going to have to update your credit card, uh, uh, you know, max balance pretty quickly, which is well, not yeah. great for students. Yeah. Uh, I, I did an OKD in, in AWS uh, um, and just for testing what a base OKD install was and it was a, it ends up costing about 500 a month you know yeah. what i mean or 460 or something and that's yeah, not so yeah like, that's like that's like you know three control plane and three workers you know that's the that's the default and just to clarify i wasn't thinking of creating a a dev workspace for just deploying applications but instead like for doing pipelines for building components okay. of of OKD and whatnot, so not de so more like working group members having a space to do some of these pipeline things we've talked about in terms of okay. assembling things, swapping out things, using yeah. Tecton to build OKD, right? So, exactly, providing providing OKD to build OKD. So that that was the conversation that I was trying to have with um, people like Brian Cook and Marcel Hild and um, Karsten Wade, who's the community manager for Operate First. There, in theory, is a way for us to get that kind of access to have a cluster running OKD on the um, what's called, called Mass Open Cloud. It's I call it Boston University, their cloud um, that we have access to. Um, that we could do, have a build pipelines. We could do all of that stuff for it. Um, and and I think that's the conversation I'd like to pursue for the working group members. So maybe you know, not the general public yet like but just for the you know you you belong to the working group and you know you you get access to it. I, I don't know what the gatekeeping would be but um there is and and they're keen to do it um you know i i'm i'm keen to get them on a call with all of us to really walk through what the logistics of that looks like and so maybe reaching out to um and brian cook is really the technical person working on improving the um, build processes for OpenShift for OCP. Um, and tangentially, he's associated with the Operate First team because they're all, everybody's agenda. But the Operate First guys have a, a separate agenda um, where they want to do other things and build patterns and pipelines and stuff. But I, th those people, I think, if we can get them engaged um, with us, are keen to work with us because they think of us as a really big community, um, <laughs> and a big, big. You know, it's all in perspective, right? Um, and I, and also, almost, I think, as a way to justify Operate First um, participation, you know, existing as an as an initiative. So um, we have an advantage there because we have some real needs, and the people who do Mass Open Cloud are all OpenShift people. They're very OCP, and, and so, so I think there's an opportunity there. Um, so I didn't try, I don't think I tried to pull in Brian Cook and the Operate First people for the next OKD working group, but um, perhaps we should, you think? I think that would be good, yeah. All right, then I'll, I'll shoot a note to them now and see if I can get them on the next call it seems like we've been sort of sitting on the idea for a couple months now. And it yeah, to... it started before KubeCon. They came to me and we had them blathering on about it, trying to get them to show up. 
and I know they want to, but I think they may be looking mm -hmm. for an explicit invite. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, let's send it to them. Yeah. So move on Brian, in here. I'll, I'll yeah, make... so Brian, moving back to um, technical documentation, is there anything that you can glean from what Jack Henschel was talking about from CERN last week? to inform our build docs or can should we meet with him and maybe pick his brain in a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one yeah um, <clears throat> yeah i mean he, he didn't actually give any concrete examples of the challenges they had to solve to get there going he, he was more talking about i think their use cases i yeah. think what would be really useful is to actually have the conversation of where did you struggle in building okd um, and, and just how much did they build and customize? Because I got I got the impression that for some of it, it wasn't a lot of change. Right. And, and but what he described was basically just literally taking the container list, the container image list, yes. pulling it down, then swapping one out with what they want. You know. Yes. So modified. so I, yeah. So how was that? Like two containers, or was it twenty containers, or? And what what challenges did they hit? Um, and was it guesswork, or was did they go through a process to actually figure out what the the container substitutions were, um, or did they just it was a pure guesswork? So so yeah, I think it'd be really worth while having that conversation with them. Um, Do we want to set something up that's more informal then, like just a, a quick meeting and yes. maybe come with yeah. some prepared questions? Yeah, yeah. I mean, whether we do or, it on Slack or, or whether we actually have a conference. Does it make sense to start with a discussion thread and have him chip in on a discussion thread? That if way he can do it, do it async in his spare time. Yeah, if he's willing to do it in the open. I, I don't know how – he seemed very, very open in a meeting. Yeah. I just don't know whether – if we get into the technical details, whether that's something they'd want to share or not, giving it sure. their internal, okay. yeah. All right. Well, let's let's reach out to him. I'm happy to reach out to him and just okay. um, say, what what would be your preferred method of having a more technical conversation? Yeah. And is he the the yeah. appropriate person? There might be someone who's more did more of the actual yeah. hands on. Okay, I will add that as a task for myself. So, Jamie, reach out to Jack. Okay, can, can I ask a question that's related to what we've been talking about? Uh, so, the um, uh, partially, it's not like I remember, you know, with with uh, version three cluster up and so on, which sort of uh, got lost with version four, and um, when, I, when I'm looking at why things are so big, um, a, a lot of the stuff seems to be things that are required for an operational system that you don't really need for a dev system, uh, you know, in terms of reliability and also monitoring. Uh, and then uh, what's uh, so you know you, you need to pull some of that stuff up out. But uh, if you try and do that, what you immediately will find is that there's massive dependencies. So, like, if you try and pull out the monitoring, all of a sudden your uh, cluster, your, your console doesn't work. Uh, so then what I wonder on a technical standpoint is uh, whether or not people have actually looked at the uh, sort of dependency graph and uh, uh, if they've looked at the, the issue of how coupled everything is to everything else, and whether or not you can decouple it so that you can actually pull out parts that you don't need and have the rest of it work. Uh, so, I mean, that, that gets into sort of a big technical question. And, 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 and that's what I – sorry, Bruce, go ahead. Yeah, no, what I was, was going to say, and, and it may be that um, if you're going to try and experiment on the outside, then, you know, maybe that's post-building it the way it is. So, um but I, I think that, that that was one of the things I was hoping that we would get into when we had this very brief CRC working group of how do we slim it down. And, uh, and, and I, I thought that's what Red Hat were looking at. Because um, when, when they did the 410 launch streams, they did talk about 
re reinvigorated effort around code ready containers. containers. I, think they, I, I think they've even rebranded it and we keep calling it CRC, but there's another name and it's escaping my brain right now, but they have been re looking at it, but I, not in the context of um, Okay, they haven't been a conversation, but yeah, and slimming yeah. it down. The, uh, um, frankly, the focus right now is on micro shift, which isn't, which is not really no. what we. Are no, looking it's at. not the user experience that we want now. No. Yeah, yeah. Is anybody, Diane, looking at the like what would be the benefits of micro shift versus the fifteen other? Kubernetes alternatives, you know, like uh, Kubernetes and Docker or, uh, you know, Minikube or all of those things. I'm, I'm sure there is some sort of competitive chart somewhere. Yeah, in, we, we in, talked in about the, this, I think, at the last meeting, is that I don't think that there there is one readily yeah. available. Um, I don't think there's one in the OKD community or the OpenShift community. But yeah. I'm sure outside of the community that there are. Yeah, I, I also think that MicroShift is serving a different master. Um, uh, it's serving the edge computing, telco, automotive, um, reaching to the very edges of devices and things, um, and needs you know it, it needs bits and pieces of Kubernetes, um, but not all of it. Just like you're describing there. I, so, but I think we have different needs. For different bits and pieces, um, especially the developer experience pieces. So, I think whatever code ready containers or Snow comes out to be, or if we create, you know, the other thing is we could hack our own Slender, you know, the Slenderman version of OKD um, as a, a community if we wanted to, um, especially if we owned our build process, just like. Right. If we could get on, I mean, this is the, I was shutting down so I could log in and, and see if I could get everybody um, to talk about the opera. If we had our own build process, we could have build pipelines for lots of different things, for Fedora, generic OKD on uh, Fedora Core OS, something for OpenStack similar to what CERN has done, something for Mike McEwen's project um, that he's, he's looking around. So, at, so the goal here, I know we keep looking back at the mothership at Red Hat to do something for us, Slender, but um, it might be something we ha we'd have to hack and build ourselves. Hack out everything you don't want, Bruce, and and see if we can make it work. Um, and it might be an experiment for a bunch of um, interns. Yeah. It may be that we have to stop where, where things aren't there. We can't change the OpenShift OCP source, so we may have to provide a stub to allow us to remove a, a component, but still have everything else work as it was there. I think we can yeah. learn, learn a lot from the approach that CERN took to make it work, you know, what they had to do to customize it to work with their version, their flavor of OpenStack. Yeah. So, and and that's, that's what I'm hoping. And um, so, anyways. I digress, and I will I will go send that email and get the operate first people on the call next week. All right, uh, let's move on real quickly. Um, repository move timeline and steps. Um, doesn't seem like anyone else has added anything in terms of discussion to that item. Um, do we do I, I, we want to just move forward with the the handful of us? Doing this work, or or do we want to get more people? Well, I, I, I think the I think the big one is the OKD repo, yeah. because that's where we've got our discussion, yeah. and that's where everyone's been pointing to. So I think we're going to have to manage the migration of that one. I did an experiment and worked out if you transfer ownership, then everything goes with it. So I think we know how to move it now, but it, it's going to be that how do we manage getting everybody that we've just got going to the discussion forum there <laughs> over to the new discussion forum. Um, so so that, that, that's a challenge there. For the OKD.io one, we just need to coordinate with whoever looks after the DNS right. to make yes. sure that we get that C name switched over to 
right. of right. one project. So, so in terms of the other OKD repo, Vadim just enabled discussions like a year and a half ago. That's actually a relatively new thing. There wasn't discussions before. We could just say to Vadim, yeah. hey, can you shut this down? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we want people to come uh, well, well, one, Once you process. transfer ownership, it goes. Once you transfer yeah. ownership, it'll all be in our right. new one. So we're just going right. to move everything that's there across. Yeah. But it's if people have bookmarked it and now, I, I think if nobody else grabs the name, GitHub will do an automatic redirect for a, for a short amount of time. But it's it's more about we don't want to disconnect yeah. anybody that's, that's in the community. So I think there will have to be some messaging around this is what we're going to do and this is when we're going to do it. So to give people a chance. Um, well, we had set a timeline of July 1st. I think that's optimistic in terms of messaging, just because KubeCon took so much time out of people and we had the jam-packed main meeting. So let's actually, I'll set aside 15 minutes at the next main meeting to talk about yeah. this and actually yeah. like make sure everyone is aware. That's the, the biggest thing is awareness that everyone in the working group is aware. This is really happening. We've been talking about it, but yeah. it's really happening. Yeah. yeah. All right, um, moving on, because we've got about 12 minutes left. Um, <laughs> survey uh, will go out tomorrow um, in all the places. I'm going to post it in, and let me see if I've got this right. Anyone let me know if I've missed anything. The Slack channel. Uh, Diane, do you have control of the Twitter at least? Yep, I can tweet. Okay, so uh, the tweet uh, will go out. Um, should we put a blog post on the website for it? On OKD.io, yeah. On OKD.io. Let's do a blog post for that. Um, well, well, rather than that, put it on the front page. Yeah. People that might Perfect. not find the blog, let, let's just put it on as a title That's on the fine. front page of blog, yeah. Okay, let's do that. And then do we want to have a set time that we keep it up? Or do we want it to be indefinite? Um, keep, keep it up for as yeah, keep keep it, make it indefinite, I would say, because um, we can just keep gathering data from it um, as we go, you know. Okay. The, the other thing is the talk that Brian and Christian are going to give in Dublin is going to be recorded. So, Brian, in, in whatever you do, think of that as something that's going to get embedded into the OKD.io homepage. So, okay. So, as, as you're talking, be, you know, because I, I, yeah. I really capture that content, um, the freshest stuff with the SCOS conversation in it, and get that on the home page as well. Okay, yeah, I, I need to work out what we're going to say and who's going to say what. So I need to get together with Christine and mm -hmm. work out what, what needs to be said at that event he, next week. He just, he just booked his stuff. Um, and then when in London, he's not going to go. And what we might end up doing is just the 10 minute sprint version of what you okay. guys do for the half hour there and just have you on stage talking about and basically recruiting again. Um, okay. So think about it that in that way. We've done both versions, but I really would like the in-depth one for, um, okay. you got a half an hour, so use it. And, um, okay. Uh, okay, okay, next up is um, the, uh, are there any other FAC uh, suggestions? I've got those there. I'm sort of chipping away at them. Uh, do, are, does anyone else have any suggestions for frequently asked questions that we should add, uh, or that we should add the answers to? Anyway, if you do, please add that. Maybe I'll do a discussion item that's like, people can just throw suggestions into it. Like, okay, here's things we need in the FAQ. Um, okay. SNO documentation. Um, uh, nothing, nothing, I don't think there's any more discussion on that. Uh, but I think that's an important point from what you were talking about the first item. At the minute, we don't have SNO on the site. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's really important because that means that we, we nobody can do a, a right. reduced resource install of OKD now. Um, well, let me... Let's see. 
So I, I think so, in the, an ask of the main meeting is somebody that understands the new process yeah. needs to write the instructions, and I see Michael's on, and needs to work with Michael to get those instructions into the docs. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's an ask of the main meeting. Okay, well, I will add that to something to ask at the main meeting. Um, depersonalizing home lab documentation. Are we just gonna, do we wanna just go and change these or do we wanna reach out to Vadim and Shri? I haven't seen Shri at the last meeting or so, but no. I can shoot him a message. Um, yeah. So maybe update his stuff and, and of course Vadim we can reach out to. Is there a better better descriptors, Brian, for that other than Vadim's home lab and Shri's, uh, whatever what Shri's was? Well, I, I think, I mean, I, I'd like to know what value they provide, not 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 in a, not in a nasty way, but because when I see the word guide, I think it's going to guide me to do something or help me do something. These are literally example installs they're not guides in any way they are just this is what you can do with okd it's an yeah. exemplar of an install so maybe create another heading that is yeah. example installs and then but also take the depersonalize it a little bit and you can yeah. keep in the, in the heading and just keep it you know who the author is and everything like that but that if that I'd be more comfortable with that as well. And this goes to like getting a template for people to use and yeah. reuse too. So, yeah. but I think yeah. I, I, I think example installs is a good thing. And then we could go get other. How about example installs and configurations? Because it's more than just, well, this is just more than installs. It's, there's also like this is my how I run it type stuff. And I was going to say there's also some an issue with um, with, with currency. Because I think I think it's Vadim's that he went and did a hacked single node install before single node install was there. Because these are these are version four, five, or four six, yeah. not four ten. Brian, does it make sense then for you to pull these out until they are updated? Well, I or I, I, or, or moved around or manipulated in whatever fashion. Again, it, it comes back to getting content from the community. I'd like. I'd like there to be proper guides. I'd, I mean, when but, I first but I mean, does install, it, but if these are outdated and and if they're not helpful right now, does it make yeah, sense I, to uh, hide them until we possibly, possibly, okay. yeah. How 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 about this? We add the menu item, drop them into, just call it examples, and then have whatever the title yeah. is. You know, not Vedim's whatever, yeah, but yeah. Um, have them there so that we don't lose the legacy, and then make a request at the next meeting to see if there's anybody who's willing to take Vadim's docu document, his example, and try it again, right, now that we have snow. And then make, and, 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 but again, we need the template. We need a little bit of better turn yeah. and, and look for a volunteer to take what Vadim did and what Shri did and turn it, update it, try it for the new thing and give us feedback and update the docs. And, um, you know, I have I have swag. If I need to send them an open shift backpack, um, I I would do that. You know, I you know. Yeah. Um, I think that's uh, uh, we have to start incentivizing people a little bit here. Yeah, I mean, as an idea, is it worth trying to do a a working like like a hackathon or a work? Because I mean, Daniel was sort of started taking on that but never really did anything but i i think we need to actually again looking at that how easy is it for someone to come on board i couldn't i couldn't get on board with what the information that's on there i ended up watching a youtube video <coughs> yep um because even with the doctor io it was taking me through the configuration and i i didn't know the vocabulary i didn't know the terminology i look at it now and it makes sense to me but the very first time I did that, I just didn't, un I didn't know the vocabulary. I didn't know the domain. I didn't know what it was asking me for. So I went and found a YouTube video um, and it showed me exactly what I needed to do. I, I could pause the video and say, oh, that's the, what that value means. And so I, I think it is worth just look going back and maybe having a workshop 
if we can get enough people, four or five people, and let's do a two, three hour workshop and let's define what a guide needs to be for each for a platform, create a template, and then we can go and ask for our volunteers. Well, and Brian, this is actually, this predates you, but we did that, uh, what was it, two years ago? Or, uh, yeah, I think it was, or a year and a half ago, maybe it was, like maybe the last winter we did something like that. And it actually, this work w that you're seeing was sort of spawned out of that, and the guides were sort of spawned out of that. And that was the effort when we started to sort of migrate the guides from the one location to the other, came out okay. of those guides sitting there for a while. Diane, can we set something up maybe yeah. in August? I, I would love to do something in August. Um, yeah, because that would give us enough time to publicize it. Um, so if you want to look at your calendars, including Michael, um, Burke, because it would be lovely to have a documentation person on, you know, around and see what dates and just let me know and maybe think about it by next week and we could socialize a date and I'm, we're, I'm happy to use um, Blue Jeans or Zoom. Zoom, you can have breakout rooms and stuff like that um, and host it. Uh, we can even do it using, um, uh, not HackMD, um, up in again yeah. because that and then just just have four tracks or you know whatever one big track and then spawn up new tracks as we need them and hop in because then we then we'd also capture their names and everything else for future recruitment hop in was good was what we used last time and that turned out to be really helpful yeah for that. So i'd be happy to do that just pick a date i will look my i'll just say that i'm going to be busy mid-july so august i love um I'm moving my mother to Canada, slowly but surely. Um, and hopefully by August, things will calm down. Um, so that we'll get that. I, I'd, I'd love to do that. I, I'd be happy to do that and start to do a cadence of things along that line. Um, I think we also could have a hack, M, not a hack, uh, a hop in hackathon on um, testing the, the CentOS stream um, deployment because they're in theory I'm probably not supposed to say out loud that's going to come around July 15th ish okay. but that's theory and practice is something else okay. um, so we'll hear we can ask Timothy but I think right after that's so out it would be nice to have a hackathon on um, explaining how to, you know the differences if any and how to get it and and do something some publicity around that to see who, who does it and I haven't or, yeah. Anyways, now we're at the end of our hour. So I'm yeah, so we're at the yeah. end of the hour. What I'm, I actually had um, uh, SCOS uh, on, as an agenda item. I'll bump it to next documentation meeting. The gist is going to be we should probably have a conversation of how do we talk to the community about it, right? And and we, I don't think we have enough details yet to be able to talk to the community about it, but we're going to want to. And just so you know, what I have asked is uh, um, Michelle Cricky and um, Fabiano and that team to write a blog and with Timothy and Stephen about the coming of SCOS, not in relationship with OKD, and then a follow-on one in relationship with that. Um, so, uh, and maybe highlight the work that the, the folks who are in the sprint do, the engineers, and get them to come. So my goal is um, Fabiano probably will show up again next week. I'm hoping he drags um, Luigi and there's a few other folks on that team that are doing that sprint. I really need them to, to get engaged with the OKD working group on an ongoing basis. Um, I think uh, the more we love them for what they're doing, the more likely they'll want to stay invested in it. And it will, they'll be invested in it for a while, but um, again, I don't want to burn people out like we've done with Vadim. So um, all the support and love we can show them for the work that they've done. Um, and this is probably their first attempt at, at doing anything with OKD, the guys that, and gals that are working on it. It'll be fun. Hackathon date. Let me know. I'll set up the, I'll, we'll talk about it next week's meeting. And then I'll set up hop in and host that. And we can do it for four hours or a whole day. If that's what it takes. Awesome. All right. Well, we're over time, so let's uh, call it a
call the meeting now and um, I'll see most of you all uh, next week. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Cheers.